In this video, we're going to have a look at creating a floor slab for our building. To do this, I'm going to first of all go across to the ground floor plan. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now, if we look at the architecture tab, go across to the floor command and then click the little drop down menu and I'm going to use the architectural floor. You'll notice now that we have this modify create floor boundary section over here. We also have in the properties, the type selector is displaying a particular type of floor. We can click down and see there are a few other ones there. So we've got ground floor suspended and a ground floor bearing. I'm going to use the ground floor bearing as the basis of my construction. And then as we did with the walls, I'm going to edit the type, duplicate it, and change the name of it. Now again, the name I'm going to keep based on um, the form of construction. So we've got on the bottom 150 mil of hardcore. Um, it's got 50 mil sand blinding. I'm actually going to change that to 25. Uh, 125 concrete. Well, I am going to actually change that completely there. I'm going to make that um, 150. Oh, 125. Um, so, yeah, we'll. I'm going to actually change it so the insulation is on the bottom. There are a couple of ways of doing this. So I will delete that. And I'm going to change it to 100 mil of insulation. And I'll have a 50 mil screed. And I'm going to have a 150 concrete slab. So there is some variations in what you might choose to do, but name representing the construction is just a good practice, makes it easy to identify what it is. You can select from the type selector, then edit the construction, make this box a little bit bigger just so we can see what we're doing. And then we've got sand cement read when well, I made that 50 mil. The membrane layer Okay, um, a vapor retarder. Okay, we'll leave that there. That's fine. The core boundary, I'm going to move up. Then the structural concrete, I'll move that up one. So now the insulation is below it. Change that to 150. Change the insulation to 100. I'll move the core boundary by here up another one. Uh, the damp proof layer between the sand and the insulation. Uh, about 25. And the hardcore stays the same at 150. And we can see that's all okay like that. No need to change any of the materials on this occasion. Click OK. Oh, now it's brought up an error here. You'll notice that the functions need to be in certain layers. So row seven, okay, um, cannot ascend from core boundary to the finish. So what we need to do is think about what we've got from these different layers. <clears throat> now, sometimes this happens and it is a bit difficult to sort out. So what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit and just change um, this to a substrate and just see if that, yeah, that's just corrected it. OK, and click OK. Now I'm ready to actually draw the boundary of the floor. What I'm going to use here is the pick walls command. 
and this is for our boundary lines. So we'll notice that I've got no offset in the options bar and I've got extends into wall core ticked. Now extends into wall core, because when we did the wall construction, we had the core boundaries either side of the block work. So this means that it will go through the plaster up to the actual block work, which is what we want. So now I just keep the cursor on the inside of the wall as I press and go around the four walls, adding that in. If you've accidentally clicked and it's on the wrong side of the block work, the pink line, you can click the blue arrows and swap it back and forth like so. And then you press the big green tick. It says that it overlaps. Would you like to cut out the geometry? Yes, we would, because that's where the plaster then is being cut out for the floor slab to go up to the block work. OK, it's got the wall, the floor selected in blue. Um, if we click off the floor, it deselects it. We'll just look back at our 3D view. And I'm just going to rotate the building around so you can now see that floor construction. 